Hey guys, so we are back again with another reading and this one is all about your May predictions. So what do you have to expect in the month of May? What is going to be going on for you guys? And so it could relate to your finances, career, love, family, friend situation, literally anything. We are going to see what you guys have to expect and what's going to be going on. And I do want to mention that this can be used as a timeless reading. So if for some reason you're watching this in the future, maybe you were scrolling through my readings and you felt drawn to this one, it's totally cool. You can definitely watch it and get a timeless message for you of what to expect in your upcoming month or time period. So I also want to mention to you guys that I have my Patreon. I post a ton of readings over there. And if you haven't checked that out, definitely go do it. The link is in my bio for that. And there's a ton of additional readings. So a lot of really great content. Some of it's a little 18 plus stuff that just the YouTube algorithm doesn't allow us to post over here. So definitely check that out if you want to join us over there. So with that being said, today we have a beautiful selection of cards for you guys to choose from. And I'm going to show you guys the numbers on each of the cards. So we are starting off with pile number one. Then we have pile number two, number three, and number four. So if you guys need more time to decide, you can totally feel free to rewind, pause, and take as much time as you need, but we are gonna go ahead and jump into pile one. Hey, pile one, so for your pick a card, you guys got within the next few months, and for your tarot, you got the chariot, eight of wands, the sun, six of pentacles, eight of cups, and the ace of swords. So wow, I can see that this is going to be an incredibly strong, important month for you guys. With the Chariot and the Eight of Wands coming out like that and the Sun, this is going to be a month when your dreams finally come true. I feel that this is a manifestation that a lot of you guys have been wanting for a really long time and it is happening. It is happening with the Chariot and the Eight of Wands. Those are cards that speak about very fast action, um, something happening rapidly and quickly. So it's almost like, you know, I think a lot of times I've seen posts lately about how do you know when your manifestations are coming and a lot of times it's like when you kind of think what's going on I've been trying for this for so long and it's not happening what's happening why has this not come through is it not going to come and that's the moment right before it happens and then it'll come in suddenly and I feel like that's the energy of this month for you guys that there is some big manifestation something big you guys have been working on that is going to come in really fast and strong. This is very strong, powerful energy with these three cards at the top. This is like not a small change. It's not like I've been trying to manifest a blueberry muffin and I got a blueberry muffin. It's like, you know, something big, something that might have seemed almost impossible or out of the ordinary or something like that. I feel like it's going to put you in a bit of an elevated position and you might get an influx of money with the six of pentacles. Um, so it may be that you have been trying to, you know, get ahead at your workplace or um, have some kind of like elevated position because I really do see that happening. And then you guys, wow, with the Ace of Swords, I actually, when I was pulling cards, I pulled them really fast and I don't like to overthink them. Um, but I thought that was the Two of Swords and it's the Ace of Swords, another super powerful card that talks about quickness fast, something fast, something happening that is kind of like overwhelming speed. So this is a huge month for you guys. And I really think there's something you guys have been waiting on that has felt delayed or has felt like it wasn't going to take place. And now it's like, this is the month for it to happen. And with the eight of cups, I feel like you guys are leaving behind a certain situation or a certain vibe, something that was going on in your life that maybe you feel like it's no longer serving you. And then that is done. And it's Going to be completed and you guys are going to be free of that so if there was something you guys were having to do that really you didn't feel was serving you or something that you were like oh, i have to be in this situation and i hope this breakthrough happens that is going to happen so i wow this is just so much powerful energy and i feel like there's a message here with this being your pick a card that if it doesn't happen this month it's going to happen within the next few months but I feel like for most of you guys it is happening this month but it's almost like I'm seeing it compound like it's not like whatever boost you get this month is going to be 
how almost I'm hearing a fraction of it. So it's like maybe you get some kind of a boost this month, but it's nothing compared to the boost you get in the future. You know how when something compounds, like compounding interest means you get paid like a, an amount that might be good, but it's going to grow even more. It's going to be better and better. So I feel like this is setting off almost a chain reaction. Like I'm seeing dominoes um, get knocked over. So even though you were wanting this one thing, this is just the beginning and it's going to be so much better than you guys could even have imagined or hoped for but I do feel like for a lot of you guys there was some manifestation that you guys were working on for a long time probably putting energy into it and being like okay when like is am I doing something wrong is that not working and that's usually your sign it's so funny every time I have had a manifestation and other people were talking about this online too um Every time I've had a big manifestation happen, it's always come through right at the moment when I kind of forgot about it and was like, well, whatever, I guess, well, I don't know what that was. I guess it's not going to happen. Or I had, you know, because I always had visions come to me. Um, so sometimes I would get a vision of something in my future and I'd be really excited about it. And it would feel like a psychic vision. Like, you know, I don't know how to describe it if, if you don't get them, but it just feels very different from like a regular thought or anything. Um, and so I'd be like waiting for that vision and like looking around, like, could this be it? Could that be it? And it would just take a long time. And eventually, like a few months, you'd be like, okay, I don't know what that was. Maybe I was hallucinating. I don't know why I had that vision. But anyway, it's definitely not happening. And then boom, as soon as it's out of your mind, that's when it comes in. And so I feel like for some of you guys, there's something you've been pushing, working on, trying to make happen. And this is that lapse period where you it's kind of like I always compare to planting the seeds and then you know there's that period like I think you plant I could be totally wrong but I know it takes a few months I think you plant the seeds in fall but I, maybe I'm wrong <laughs> I'm not a farmer but anyway you you got to go through those few months when nothing's happening and the dirt is just looking the exact same because you've got to have that faith of like it is going to harvest it is going to grow even though you can't see it yet and you guys are in that stage and I see this month it happening so that's so exciting for you guys okay so we got garden of venus rest and renewal fortune's wheel luck and right timing a tidy house clarity and organization and the crossing initiation I want to put these here so you guys can see how awesome your cards are like and not forget them. So I'm going to space these out. But yeah, fortune's wheel. That is a card talking about luck. It relates to the wheel of fortune. So this is your lucky season. I feel like there are things happening for you guys this month that you didn't see coming and we're just like, you know, oh, I, I'm not a lucky person or, well, I hope this happens, but it's going to be even better than you imagined. And it's almost like that time, the season of like goodness, because I, I love the song Turn, Turn, Turn by the birds. And they say like, for every time there is a season, turn, turn, turn. And they're kind of talking about the wheel of fortune. That's why they say turn, you know, turning that wheel because the wheel is always turning. And so that's the thing is like, there's times when we're supposed to be not much happening that helps us kind of rest and keep our energy up. And there's times when we're supposed to be working. And then there's times for the blessing, there's times for the pain. And I feel like this is your time of blessings and things you guys have wanted to happen. And Venus does relate to money, wealth, abundance, luxury, and you guys might even like like I said, there's an energy here of taking a step back and then having the blessings come in because I think sometimes it's it's such a delicate balance because you got to work hard for your manifestations. But sometimes it's that moment when someone takes a step back and is like, you know what? I'm just going to relax a little bit. And that's when they kind of give the space for spirit to come in and surprise them and give them this blessing so sometimes when we're pushing so hard with so much energy on something for so long it doesn't allow spirit to work its magic you know and to really come in and give us that aid that we need so I see some of you guys maybe taking a little bit of a break or just also for some of you guys it's being surrounded in opulent luxury setting so going out to eat in a nice restaurant I always think that's a really good um, manifesting energy if you guys you know are don't have like a ton of money or you're trying to manifest a different income for yourself just taking yourself out to eat at like a really fancy upscale place of course if you you can't budget it you can't budget it but I think if you can work that into the budget you know going out to eat at a really beautiful glamorous place that makes you feel good and you get dressed up and you like feel your highest vibe 
type of self, I feel like that is a very powerful, energetic, you know, kind of wave you're sending out to the universe. So I see some of you guys going out to eat at nice restaurants with like kind of like taking the time out to spend time with friends, taking the time to enjoy it, learning to work in enjoying because like life is a marathon, not a sprint. And some of you guys were working so hard that it was kind of like you were in a sprint. You were just pushing and pushing and pushing. And now it's like, okay, we're, we're chilling a little bit. And this is so funny because that, even though it's counterintuitive, that's a lot of times when the blessing actually comes in. Um, I see some of you guys honestly might be moving with a tidy house coming in, not necessarily this month, but within the next few months. And this month is where you really start getting those messages from spirit of like, yeah, I think I want to move. And you start looking at houses and you start, you know, maybe sending out offers or, um, you know, looking up rents or whatever it is in your situation or figuring out exactly where you want to go. And, and the wheels start turning on that. There's a heavy like wheel energy, like things start falling into place this month. And I, I see you guys getting more aligned with your path for the rest of this year, because there's something about things happening and really coalescing in the next few months, which I, I don't mean to say it again and again. And I know this is a month reading, but I just keep getting a lot of you guys are going to be you're getting glimpses this month of what the rest of the year is going to be in terms of like, um, there's stuff that's going to be happening for you at the end of the year and in summertime where it's really going to start speeding up. It's kind of like, this is the month, like I said, it's like compounding. So this is the month. I, I, I know this is such an odd image and probably not very pleasant, <laughs> but I'm seeing like a broken down car or something at the top of a hill and someone's like been pushing it uphill and this is the month when it like crests and goes over the hill and then like again the car is dead battery or something but it starts going down the hill and then it 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 picks up speed and so it's like even though this month you're like oh so much easier oh my god i'm not pushing it uphill it's just going by itself this is a dream you have no idea how much faster it's going to be by the end of the month and how much easier it's going to be and how happy you're going to be by the end of the year because i feel like it's stuff like you guys were putting this out there in the universe or you guys have been working on this manifestation but you really are not expecting it to happen this way and so this month i see you getting a boost in that direction but it's almost like it's it's not the full thing so don't get too excited get excited because it's going to be even better but i mean it's going to happen within the next few months and i see you guys getting that direction this month of like okay so i'm going to move here or i'm going to do this for my career or i'm going to do xyz at my job and it's like there's some kind of framework being set this month that sets the foundation for the rest of the year um, if that makes sense so we also got going forward opportunity openness community wow amazing and i feel like yeah you guys are going to be going forward with this. There's such forward momentum in place. There's so much like, I, I, get, I keep hearing the path appears in my head. So it's like, okay, I know where to go. And this is working out. And, and you start seeing like the bones of it taking shape. You know how sometimes when you're like, if you pass um, a construction site in the early stages, if you've ever had like a house being built in your neighborhood or something like that, in the very early stages, you're like, oh my God, like they tore down that house. It looks freaking horrible. That lot is so dirty now. Like, oh, what are they doing? And then it gets cleared. And then you're like, oh, wow. Like, okay, so it's an empty, muddy lot. That looks really bad. And then you start seeing the framework. And it, again, there's that stage where you're like, oh God. So they just built the basement. So it's like this open gaping hole in the ground. And Ooh, there's some wood, but it's kind of laying around. And then finally, it reaches a point when you start seeing the, the bones. You start seeing the framework and the little beams up and the foundation and the, you know, little wood, like, um, yeah, beams that are just going to be holding up the house. And then it starts, you start being like, oh, okay, so it's, so it's a three-story 
there's a basement too. And okay, it looks like there's that, that's gonna be the kitchen, I think. Oh, that's that looks like a dining room. Oh, and they'll put a window because it's curved. So maybe it's like one of those curved wind, you know, those like windows that go like that. Oh, wow. Okay, that looks kind of cool. Like you start being able to see what's happening. And I feel like this month is is that for you guys. But it's like, I can't state enough. It's a big boost. But it's like, you really have no idea because it's going to be even better. Even though this month might feel like, oh my God, I'm, I, I must be dreaming. This is amazing. It's like, you only have one idea. This is only a fraction of what it's going to be. You know, it's going to be so much better than you imagined. Um, so I just think spirit is saying, be open to the stuff that they might give you this month. Oh my God. I just looked at my timer and it's 1333 right when I looked, um, so crazy exactly to the second so wow um so more confirmation and and threes can talk about community which is one of the cards we got so i see you guys taking time to make some friends hang out with friends and i feel like that is a good thing because i think some of you guys have been working so hard and so intensely on this and you need to know that it's okay to take a little bit of a pause and it's okay to hang out with the people that are around you or the people like it's okay to do things that you love to do and actually your energy is going to be better so like maybe you have a hobby maybe you love to bowl i don't know why i just saw that in my mind like as in bowling or even making bowls pottery or paint or write or draw or you know go for walks or work out and you've been like i don't have time i can't do this like i i have to be disciplined and i feel like spirit is saying it's okay this month to take out time to do the things you want to do because all of that is going to help you make these things happen your energy is going to be better when you're a little more rested and and focused and um so creating that time out for yourself to really feel your highest vibe self is actually going to help you with manifestations because the energy that we give from ourselves and pour into our manifestations, which is like a form of magic is makes a huge difference in how they happen. You know, if we can just conjure up the energy within ourselves and then pour it into it, um, then that will happen a lot faster. But the thing is, if we have no energy in the first place, we have no energy to pour into that. So I think they want you to like make sure you're taking time to rest and be open to people, be open to opportunities. Like I feel like there's a message for some of you guys in this pile that you need to be more open to people. Um, they love that you've been so focused on your path, but also like if you meet someone and you hit it off at a party and you're like, well, I don't really know. They're not perfect. Or like, just be open to it. You know, just be, just talk, just chat. Or some, some people, I think when they're really working on a goal and there is such a benefit to hermit mode. So it's not to, you know, say like, you, there's no point in doing that ever. Sometimes people get their greatest revelations through like, you know, going into hermit mode and really taking that time alone. But also there's so much to be gained from the energy of other people. I mean, we are the human race, right? We are all so energetically interconnected and you don't want to hang out with low vibrational hater type people, but if you can get aligned with good friends that might not even be on the same path as you might not know as much as you, or might not be as aware of certain things as you, but like you, you laugh when you're around them and you feel good, then be open to that. You know what I mean? Be open to meeting them, chatting with them, going out to lunch, taking that break to during the day and if they're not not every person you hang out with has to be like a soul soulmate friend you know or a soulmate um, relationship it can just be like oh this person makes me feel good I love being around them and it's a really beautiful pleasant day and whatever and maybe they're not going to be my best friend for all of eternity but like we had fun it was a nice fun lunch or it was a nice fun dinner and we had some drinks or whatever it is and keeping it like that you know so so I think some of you guys in this group need to hear that message that like you can be open and if someone isn't exactly perfect in every way, it's okay. You can still be friends with them because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here for you guys through your social groups and stuff like that. And again, just keeping your energy light. Like I just, I want to tell this, I just almost got emotional. I want to tell this group a message that you guys deserve to have a great life all around. I feel like some of you guys, I'm getting Capricorn energy in this pile. Like you guys are my hard workers. You've been working so hard. You've been pushing yourselves and it's awesome. And spirit is so proud of you. But like Capricorn sometimes can be like, 
not the best at taking breaks, looking after themselves. And if you're like, hey, when's the last time you spent time with friends or like did a hobby just for fun? A Capricorn will look at you like, uh, I don't know, like they, when was that last penciled into my agenda? Like, um, I, in a lot of my private readings, which you can always book one with me if you want and link for that is in my bio. But when I talk to the Capricorns, they're almost all of them are always overworking themselves and not taking time out for breaks all like all. And, um, I mean, once in a while you'll meet, you know, someone who has that as a sun sign, but they don't have a lot of that other energy or they're just in a very low vibrational state and they're out of alignment with their kind of soul energy. But for the most part, most Capricorns, they just work and work and work. And it's like, I'm always having to tell Capricorns, like you need to go you know, have fun, go for a walk outside, chill a little bit, relax a little. And so that's just a message for a lot of you guys in this pile, whether you have a Capricorn sun or not, it's just Capricorn energy. So we got clouds, shape shifting, summer solstice, radiance. So like I said, go out in the sun, go outside, um, get that vitamin D, you know, and, and enjoy and see some nature. But I really feel like your future is shape shifting. Things are changing for you that I really feel like a lot of you guys aren't even going to expect this. You can never imagine Imagine these kinds of changes happening for you because maybe it's something that seemed like a dream, but you're like, well, that's not, that wouldn't happen for me. Like things like that don't happen to me. Um, let me get some cards from this pile, but I just feel like this is keep, keep open because maybe it's not something you expect. Maybe suddenly you get a message that you should move across the country and you're like, I don't want to live there. I never heard of that place. Sometimes, like I said, in my private readings, I'll tell someone like, I think you're moving to XYZ. Why is this place coming up? And they're like, oh, I would never. Oh no, I don't want to live there. No, no, no. I would not want to live there. And then, you know, you'll hear from them a couple months down the line and they're like, I know this is so crazy, but we ended up, you know, I got a job opportunity that came out of nowhere and it was great. And I moved there and it's like, you never know what, so be open. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's so funny. I've heard this chatting with some other mediums I know as well, where they're like, you know, you'll tell someone something and they're so resistant to it, but it's like your guides know what will benefit you, what will make you grow the most. And so be open to whatever this might be, even if it's beyond your wildest dreams, even if it's something you guys have not considered or expected, it may be even better for you than you could hope or want. Let me get some more cards for pile one. So we got Crystal Cave Trust. As I'm saying that, so just trust them, okay? They do know what they're doing, okay? They know exactly what is is best for you guys. And And again, some of this might be out of the blue. You might be like, I don't, I don't ever, I don't want to do that. Like, huh? If, before I ever posted my first YouTube video on here, I remember one of my friends talking to me and being like, you are crazy. Cause he's like, you're one of the most private people I know you hate like posting stuff online. And I was like, I know, but I just feel called to do this. And that's the thing is sometimes your guides know what will bring you happiness more than you might know. You know what I mean? So I feel like you guys are expanding and whatever comes up as a message, as a, as a potential move, because I really am getting for a lot of you guys, this is a move it could be moved within a career, like to a different job, or it could be a move out for a lot of you guys. I'm getting moving houses, moving apartments, even moving cities, moving places. Um, but be open to this because it's all working for your greatest and highest good. And that's a great mantra to say to yourself to really keep that energy flowing. But this is expansion. This is growth this month. This is so beautiful. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to get a couple final cards from this deck and shuffle for you guys. So let's see what message, what is happening in the month of May for pile one. Financial health and lighten your load. That's exactly what I was saying. And confidence. Wow. So positive. I, I literally can't believe these cards. Like I can't believe how positive this month is for you guys. You're growing your finances. If finances have been tight, I'm feeling like the changes that happen this month are going to align you with a much healthier financial future. I literally feel like I wish I had a little pot of confetti so I could just throw it over this pile to be like, woohoo, party, because this is so awesome. And I think you guys are going to be lightening your load. So I think it's like you've been putting in the work, the work is paying off and you're starting to get that intuitive message of like, 
you know, maybe I don't have to pull 18 hour days. Maybe I don't have to work to the point of exhaustion. Maybe it's actually helping me and my manifestations and my goals to take time off. And part of this is gaining confidence, realizing that what spirit and God has meant for you, no one can take away, right? I mean, we do need to be checking in and making sure we're on our path and we can feel that intuitively inside when we feel that fulfillment, that goodness, that sense of like, Ooh, I'm in the right place. And so we do need to check in, but you know, all things work for my greatest and highest good. All things align me with my best, best path. Those are great mantras to say. And I feel like you guys are realizing that like, this is dream life for you guys. You guys can have whatever reality you want. And if you want to have that perfect life of financial abundance and a beautiful partner and love, we can make it all happen if we put in the work, if we trust in spirit, if we align ourselves with joy, happiness, and fulfillment, it can be ours. So let me get some astro dice for you guys. So I see you guys gaining some confidence um, and getting like some self-esteem or some ability to set boundaries. So maybe this is where your load lightens, where you're like, you know what? I deserve more for my paycheck, or I deserve more for this, or I need to make some more time for myself, or I'm changing this, I'm changing that, and you just feel like you're just in a much better place mentally, and a much better place with knowing your worth, and then that comes into how you get treated, and the manifestations, and everything. So let's get some astro dice for pile one, what is happening in the month of May. So we got 12th house, Pisces, and we got Mercury. Wow. So 12th house and Pisces are together. Those are like the same thing, both ruled by Neptune. And um, Mercury is ruled by, or Mercury rules Gemini and Virgo, relates to the third house as well as the sixth house. So 12th house does relate to ending. So like I said, I see some certain things ending. And also 12th house and Pisces relate to psychic intuition. So I feel like you guys are getting psychic intuitions this month of um, of like what you guys should do, what you guys should change. So pay attention to that. Pay attention to divine. And you know, Pisces is really the sign of the divine. It really is. That's why it's the fish. The fish in, you know, religious stuff and Christianity and spirituality relates to Jesus. It's the sign of divin it's a sign of divinity, the fish. So it's like there's something very spiritually potent about this month for you guys. Like I feel like another thing about Pisces that comes to mind is Pisces is, I don't want to say it's not a lazy sign actually, but it's, it's the old person of the Zodiac, right? <laughs> and so Aries is that fiery beginning energy. Pisces is the old person. Pisces is like the old crone that has been around the block, had multiple lifetime incarnations, and they're basically kind of done. They have a lot of Pisces, I don't want to say low energy, but kind of like, it's like, it's not the sign that is going to want to wake up at not 6am and run a marathon with people. Okay. Definitely not. So that's the thing though about Pisces is there's actually a lot of Pisces billionaires and millionaires. I think it has the most signs of any that have billionaires. So people a lot of times are like, what the heck? How could Pisces be the sign that has the most billionaires? Because they understand this spiritual knowledge of like going after things and bringing in wealth and abundance is not necessarily about breaking your back and being the most energetic. Sometimes it's about aligning yourself with spirit, with divinity, with serving your purpose and bringing that to the world, right? And so a lot of Pisces, because they're highly artistic, water signs tend to get involved in businesses that are more like artistic in nature, serving their purpose not so much just like doing sales or doing something they don't really care about so because when you're the, the thing is once you align with the divine once you align with God's path for you purpose for you journey for you that's when you see the blessings fall out of the sky right with no effort for you guys and I see that happening for you guys this month and so again pay attention pay attention to the messages spirit is giving you pay attention to the signs the the messages anything, the symbols that they give you, um, because I feel like you're going to be getting those mental downloads and the abundance is coming. And so let spirit take the reins a little bit, let them, you know, take over because that's going to be so much of a better outcome. And that's what spirit Pisces really is. I guess I, lazy is the wrong word for Pisces, but a word that comes to mind is surrender. Pisces is very good at surrendering and just like a fish kind of can drift with the current and doesn't fight too hard, like with, you know, 
like I'm going to do this, I'm going to walk on land. They're just like, well, I'm just going to drift around. And that sometimes though can be the energy of the most manifestation of money. So I hope that makes sense. I just feel like this month we're we're not hustling so hard. We're we're just accepting that blessings and abundance is our birthright. And then with Mercury, and that relates to communication. It can also relate to kind of like technology and work situations and stuff. So for a lot of you guys, I feel like this relates to your work. Um, this relates to um, business and career somehow. I also feel like Mercury is a sign of communication for sure. And you guys might be taking that time out to communicate, to chat with people, to talk, to have conversation, to just meet up with people and just have a fun conversation that's not even helping your career or or on your spiritual journey. It doesn't have to be that deep. It's just about having fellowship with other people and chatting and enjoying their energy. And also Mercury is that sign of mischief that is always perpetually youthful and takes time out to kind of be a prankster, to have fun, to like, you know, to laugh and to, that's why like Geminis are known as one of the most mischievous signs in the whole Zodiac, even though they're, not, I would say the most, even though they're not a fire sign, they're very mischievous and they're very funny. And that's because they're ruled by Mercury. So it's like, um, I feel like take the time to do that. Take the time to make yourselves laugh or to have a fun convo or to just not take things so seriously. You know what I mean? So that's what's coming to mind for pile one. I really hope it helps you guys. Let me know if it did in the comments. I love hearing from you guys. So definitely let me know and make sure to check out my Patreon. I post all my additional readings over there. So if you want to see those, definitely check that out and make sure you're subscribed over here as well with notifications on. I am sending you guys so much love and light. I hope you all have an amazing day and take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. Hey pile two. So for your pick a card, you guys got breathe. And for the tarot, you guys got the eight of swords, the magician, nine of cups, six of wands, 10 of swords, nine of pentacles, and the page of cups. So I feel like the theme this month is relax. The theme is like I'm not going to be so stressed and I'm taking more time out for myself and to do the things that fulfill me and fill up my cup. And there may have been a really difficult situation that you guys have been going through recently with the eight of swords and the 10 of swords. It may have felt like you guys were just dealing with a lot of pain, a lot of painful situation over the past month or a few months. And I feel like you are going to get some awareness of how to deal with this situation, or you're just going to stop putting your energy into it. But there's some kind of an ending happening with this situation where, um, it's not on your mind as much. The Ten of Swords can talk about an ending to that. And even if it doesn't turn out exactly how you wanted or exactly how you imagined sometimes, it's like we just realize that I'm going to leave this to God. I'm going to let God be the judge of this situation and God will take care of the karma and settle all the scores that need to be settled. So sometimes it's just giving yourself permission to like, I'm just going to walk away from this. I can't do anything more. I'm sick of fighting and that's it. And spending more time focused on yourself and what gives you fulfillment and what gives you joy. Because I see with the Nine of Cups that you guys are taking the time out to do what makes you feel good with the Page of Cups as well. And I do feel like there's going to be a lot of forward momentum for you that comes along with you taking this time out for yourself. So I feel like a lot of you guys have been stressed about a certain situation in particular. It's almost like sometimes we can get drawn into petty battles, I feel. Sometimes when someone has a really strong destiny, I, I feel that the devil kind of picks up and really tries to like bring them away from their path. And so I feel like you guys might have been dealing with something that caused you so much stress and so much pain that it's like you haven't really been able to focus as much on yourself and what makes you feel good. Maybe this has been someone who's like a time drainer type of person, someone who, you know, puts a lot of demands on your energy. Maybe someone who's a bit of an emotional vampire or something like this. Maybe a toxic person that's always causing fights or something. But I almost feel like you guys learn this time how to better deal with it and that our mind really does create our reality. And it's not to say that you are responsible for a toxic person because they definitely do exist. And absolutely, so I hate it when sometimes a spiritual person can sound kind of like they're blaming someone for like, oh, you're, it, this is your fault because mine creates reality. But the my point is the faster we can take ourselves out of a negative mindset and into a positive mindset, the better. And so it's like, 
if you're dealing with a really negative person, maybe just cutting them off for the sake of your own mindset because our mind and the emotional state we're in compounds on itself, right? So if we're feeling really upset and depressed, sadly, that energy will continue. If we can somehow find a way to make ourselves feel really positive, really good, really happy, then that will lead to us feeling happier in the future. So it's just sometimes a matter of, of sorting out the people that are really bringing us down and really aren't any good for us and then choosing to you know, let them leave our lives and escort them out of our lives and wish them the best. But like, no, I I really don't have time for this anymore. Sorry, but this is bringing me down. It's not making me feel good. And so I see this month, you guys putting up some boundaries, putting up some endings. And I feel like you're spending a lot more time on yourself on your emotional well being and less time on worrying or being stressed. And it just feels like you guys are making the choice to move in a very positive direction that I feel like really works. And like I said, compounds on itself with the magician. This month, you guys might be laying the foundation and the framework for what you guys want to bring into this world. So you might be beginning those manifestations of like, I really want this to happen. I'm really hoping for that. And I feel like it is going to work. It is going to lead to this nine of pentacles in the end. And this month, I almost feel like is a month of pampering or relaxation for you guys. It feels like maybe because you guys have been under so much stress lately that this month you're just like no more I can't deal with any more of this I am only going to do things that make me feel good that make me feel happy and positive some of you guys also might be posting on social media a lot with the six of wands so maybe you have been thinking about starting an Instagram or a YouTube or a TikTok or maybe you already have those accounts but I feel like you guys will be choosing that you are going to post more on that and you'll be getting attention through social media And things that you might have been stressing out about that, maybe you've been stressing about judgment from other people on social media or something like that, but I don't feel like you guys are going to be doing that anymore. I feel like you guys are making the choice that you're going to do you and you're going to focus on achieving your dreams and everyone else can kind of just deal with it. Like I I think this month I'm getting the vibe that you guys aren't as, uh, you've been very affected by other people's energies and that's starting to end. You're stopping to, you're not, spending so much time thinking about what this person's going to say or what that person's going to say or this person being upset with you or this person being in a bad mood. Sometimes this this can happen with empaths. It's like they get very tied into everyone else's energy. So it can feel very overwhelming to them when someone doesn't agree with them or doesn't like what they're doing or is mad at them. It can feel like they feel those emotions themselves and it's highly unpleasant. And I feel like maybe you guys are putting up more barriers. Maybe you guys are doing protection stuff, whether it's wearing, you know, black crystals on you like black tourmaline or obsidian um pyrite or not pyrite um i i always blank on the name of the little silver stone but a lot of you guys will know which one i'm talking about um but anyway you guys are going to be using crystals i feel like for protection or envisioning yourself surrounded in a bubble of white light and it's going to be really working and giving you guys the protection that you guys need so i feel like a lot of you guys are cutting off some toxic people or just choosing to um, be in a better energy for yourself with choosing to keep yourself very high vibrational very positive and i feel like this is going to make a huge difference and yes i feel like you guys will be manifesting abundance this month and things are doing well with the nine of pentacles coming out so we also got stranger curiosity netcaster preparations come to fruition straddling worlds wandering between realms lost compass getting back to integrity and repairing the veil forgiveness i almost feel like some of this is like self-forgiveness or repairing yourself because you might have been emotionally very burnt out from dealing with some of these people and i think sometimes once we realize that we tolerated a toxic person in our lives we can kind of beat ourselves up for it like oh my god why did i do this especially if we are psychic right because we're like i know i got the message about them i know i felt that message that they were no good but i ignored it i I wanted to see the best in them. I was hoping for something to turn out good. So I tolerated this toxic person in my life. And I feel like the message for you guys is don't even spend any time thinking about that or beating yourself up. Of course, it's good to learn from our mistakes and to be like, yep, that was a mistake. I I definitely messed up there and acknowledging that. But then we want to, again, it's about constantly bringing yourself back to a high vibrational place where you feel good, where you feel happy and whatever that might be for you. So, um, you know, maybe it's like going out and meeting up with your friends or going for a run or painting or doing a hobby, something that really makes you feel good. I feel like with the nine of cups coming out and the page of cups, there's a really strong message that you guys need to focus on 
those things that make you feel good and make you feel happy and make you feel aligned. Um, a lot of you guys, I feel this is kind of the month when you guys are making the preparations. You guys are laying down the framework for those manifestations you might have. And this is a very spiritually potent time of year. There's a reason why a lot of holidays happen around this time. And it's because it is the brand new beginning of the year. It is Aries season and of course May is heading into Taurus season which is such a beautiful luxurious energy. I love Taurus energy and so this is the time when we really want to lay the framework and the foundation because spiritually speaking you know how everyone makes like New Year's resolutions in January but spiritually speaking this is like the new year. This is like spring and flowers coming out right. We're out of winter. We're into this fresh new energy and so this is the time to think about I want this. What do I want to plant? What do I because don't you I said in pal one they I was getting a planning metaphor for them that was different but like um I keep messing up the times of the year, but do you plant in spring or summer or, or summer or fall? Someone let me know because I'm so clueless about like anything farm or planting or anything like that. But I know you plant it sometime during the year and it, then you wait. But now I'm getting maybe you guys, this is like spring. This is like whatever you plant in spring that blossoms in the summer or in the fall. Um, but it's like we're laying down those seeds now and then they'll happen for the rest of our spiritual year, if that makes sense to you guys. So I feel like it's like think very strongly about you, what you guys want to be putting out there. Because I feel like for some of you guys you guys have been kept a little bit off your path because you've had people around you who are very focused on themselves and, you know, pulling on your attention, pulling on your energy and um, kind of pretty selfish. And I think sometimes you don't even have to be like an energy vampire to do this, but sometimes we have like parents that they want to see us have a really certain outcome, right? They want to see us living a certain way. They want to see us with a certain job that makes them look good, that they can brag to their friends about like, oh, my daughter's a doctor and they don't want to see us become an artist, even if that's what we feel called to do. So I feel like sometimes it's about just aligning your yourself with like putting up those boundaries, learning to say no and all of that um, so that we can live our happiest life for ourselves and not for other people. And I feel like sometimes when we have a parent that is so obsessed with things turning out a certain way, it can make us not even know what we want for ourselves. Or if we have friends that are very self-focused and always bringing the conversation back to ourselves, back to themselves we never realize that we're a priority we spend so much time especially empaths do this talking other people through their problems or helping someone else with their issues or you know dealing with other people's energy that we never take the time to sit in our own and to spend time in a place of calmness. Maybe some of you guys will be meditating this month, doing guided meditations or, um, you know, getting intense into tarot. But I feel like a lot of you guys, I'm getting also spending time in nature and Taurus season is such a great time for that. I mean, not just because it's like, uh, you know, flowers blooming at this time of year, but just Taurus season in general, like I always say that Taurus is the embodiment of Venus, but in terms of Earth, literally, that's why it's the Earth version of it and Libra is the air version of it. And Earth energies generally all tend to be like earthy, actually. Like, I mean, they like to spend time in nature. Generally speaking, they they're very grounded in this physical reality. And we're supposed to go out and like you know, take in like the beautifulness of the land around us and of nature and the trees and the sky and the sun on our skin or the rain on our skin. And to actually exist in this world, in this reality, God did not give us this reality just to just for like laughs and just just randomly like, well, we'll just throw in some mountains in there. No, that, that was for a reason. We're supposed to be aware of how beautiful everything is. This is like, you know, earth, think of it as like a school. And just like when they make um, like Harvard, when when it's a really prestigious high end school, they always make it like beautiful. Like the campus at Princeton is freaking stunning, beautiful, and there's art installations and stuff like that, and old buildings and you know ornate stuff. That's because it's like they want people at that school to be learning and surrounded with beauty, and that's how God designed this planet, right? So take the time out to go into nature, and that can be a very spiritual thing. But I feel like for a lot of you guys, it's like this is just about refining what it is you want because sometimes in manifestations we're like why isn't God improving my life well did you ask for something you know did you did you 
tell God what you wanted. I always compare it to like an interior designer. Like if you just brought an interior designer in and you didn't actually tell them anything you wanted, they're going to be like, okay, well, I think, uh, I like teal walls. We're going to do teal wall everything. You know what I mean? And maybe you hate teal, but you never told them that. So you can't get mad at them when you come back to your house and literally every surface is covered in teal, you know? Um, or, you know, maybe like for me, I hate minimalism. So I would never want to hire a minimalist designer. No offense to anyone who likes it. I'm just a maximalist Venus conjunct Jupiter in my chart. I like extra more over the top. That's how I, that's what makes me feel good. No one else has to like it or agree with it, but that's what I personally want for me. And by the way, other people who are minimalists would be probably going crazy if they had to live in a, in a house that's my type of design. You know what I mean? So it's all about finding what works for you, what you want, your kind of goals, whatever it is you want, and then making sure you ask spirit authoritatively for that. And I feel like for some of you guys, this is about refining. This is exactly what I want. I want this kind of a career. I want this kind of a lifestyle. I want this kind of whatever it is. What will make you feel good? What will, what will make you feel your highest version of yourself? I feel like some of you guys in this pile, you might watch, you know, I... I'm having a career reading coming up. So maybe you guys can watch that. Um, but it's like, you might be that person that like, you're not happy where you are, but you have no idea where to head. So I feel like if that's the case, think about and pay attention to what makes you feel good. What, what brings you joy? What do you spend your hobbies on? What do you spend your free time thinking about? Like ever before I ever got into pulling tarot, I studied astrology for years and years just on my own, just for fun, because I was interested in it. And I learned so much about planetary energies that helped me so much in tarot. And as well as doing um, psychic work, just again, just as a hobby, just for fun. You know what I mean? And so the thing is, is like a lot of times the things that you do for fun, you know, that can that can be talking about a purpose for you. That can be talking about something you're supposed to do. Um, and it's like, what what am I naturally called to? What do I spend my time doing that I really like, that I just love and I, I have a weird interest in it that no one else might even care about, but I like it. You know what I mean? Um, and also like astrology has become really popular in the past few years. But, um, you know, for a long time, I didn't know hardly anyone who would talk openly about astrology and people who didn't know their big three. So it was like, you were just kind of studying it alone. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's funny because I feel like, um, sometimes you don't get that initial feedback or you don't see how, like, how could this be related to my life purpose? Well, spirit has a power a path and a plan for everyone, especially nowadays with technology and with online media. There's people that make um, YouTube videos about like restoring furniture or baking or baking arts and crafts, stuff that uh, 10, 20 years ago, you could never have imagined that you could make a career out of like liking to do arts and crafts as a hobby or makeup or you know what I mean? I mean, maybe if you became a makeup artist, but now there's so many options. So it's like, think, I feel like for some of you guys, this is like a month of you guys figuring out what it is you want and laying down those foundations and making those preparations. And so I think you're just saying, really pay attention and get yourself into a place where you can feel good and where you can like, because when we're so stressed, when we're just running around from one thing to another, we don't have the time to hear spirit talk to us. We don't have the time to be like, mm, this felt good. You know, it's kind of like when you have a pain in your arm or something, you're not going to pay attention to like, by the way, like uh, my body just feels really loose today. I, I stretched yesterday and like my legs are feeling awesome because you're going to be pay atten paying attention to the pain in your arm. Like there's no way that you can be like, you know, that workout last week, I'm feeling great from it or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, because you're going to be so focused on that pain in your arm. So sometimes when we're dealing with all this stress, we have no place in our life to think about the things that bring us joy or fulfillment. So we kind of have to go to a place where like, we're, there's a little bit more quiet when we can pay attention to that. And also, I think just naturally seeing what fulfills us, what what makes us feel happy in a very deep way, not in a temporal way of like, I went out clubbing, and I took five shots of Patron and I was super drunk and now I feel pretty good. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, that lasts for like a little bit, but we're talking about long term fulfillment, like eudaimonia, as the ancient Greeks called it, like that real, fulfilling, long term joy that, you know, that a lot of times does relate to our life purpose. It relates to something more meaningful. It's not just in the moment, it's not just um, us feeling good for 30 seconds. It's about us feeling good for 
a lifetime, for a long time. And so that's something I think spirit really wants you to um, pay attention to is like fulfillment, joy, and realizing that you deserve to have the happiest life possible. So let's get more cards. So we got new beginnings, freedom, fulfillment, and security. So I feel like, yeah, this is the month of you guys laying down these foundations for a new beginning. I love this Taurus season energy for you guys. And, you know, I just feel like this, this, so it's going to be May is Taurus and it's also Gemini. So um, we're going to be coming out of Aries season um, very shortly. Maybe even it might be like, I'm not sure when I'm going to post this video, but very, it might just have already passed into Taurus. But I feel like this is going to be an energy of, you know, the peach is a perfect example to me of Taurus energy. Um, it's like the juiciness of a, of a really beautiful peach and the actual, the flavor on your tongue and the way it feels, the, the juiciness of the juices in your mouth. Um, there's like, there's like being rooted in the body that comes through with Taurus energy. And so sometimes we can use that as our compass. I feel good and happy after I do this activity. I feel bad after I do that activity. And I'm not talking about I feel bad after I worked out because yeah, you might feel tired, but you also feel good because you can feel it's making you stronger. You can feel it's building you. And sometimes I feel like spiritually we can be too rooted in like the astral plane. And actually that's a message with the magician. Cause if you look on the Rider weight deck, the tarot, the magician card is actually one hand to the sky, the other to the earth. And sometimes when we get into spiritual stuff, we can get too into this idea that we need to be in the astral plane at all times. You guys got straddling worlds. So maybe you guys have been doing that. But this is also about rooting ourselves back into the body, realizing that we are a human being in a human body for a reason. We're supposed to experience the joy, the fulfillment of physical pleasures to a certain level, not saying with absolutely no, you know, no purpose and just living a hedonistic life because that's not fulfilling but going out and having tasty food going out and having a walk and smelling nature all those things can bring us close to god and making a life that brings us joy that makes us feel secure happy fulfilled that's the ultimate goal i think for life and i feel like for some of you guys you're going to think about what this is and once you start setting that as the target you will have spirit start bringing things to your mind of people that need to leave or jobs that aren't serving us or things that aren't serving that goal um so i feel like some of you guys you get, need to get clarification and refinement on what that is and i am going to be posting my career reading very soon so um keep an eye out for that you guys might need some clarification from that in this pile but you know your intuition can also tell you these things too so we got island solitude tsunami wake-up call and river movement so maybe some of you guys need to spend a little bit of time in hermit mode i also could see with the nine of cups that maybe you are spending time with other people and socializing but it's like i think you guys need to think about whether the people that are in your life are really serving it or whether they're just kind of fun to be with and if they are that's totally fine that's totally cool but you know, make sure you're spending the time to really check in with yourself on your destiny path and not getting off track with like, I want to fit in with these people. So I'm going to blow all my money on that, even though it doesn't really fulfill my path. And I could have used the money for my career. You know what I mean? Or I could have like, like people that are just kind of, it's like a waste of time. It's okay to, it's okay to, you know, have a lunch with someone that isn't really going to advance your career in any way. It's okay to like go out and spend time with friends. I mean, that's good, but we don't want to spend all our time tuning into the energies of others that aren't like, they're not on our path. Only we can have our path. You know what I mean? So especially if someone is an energy vampire or just a little lost, we got, we've got to make sure we have enough energy in our tank. And I just think some of you guys need to be you know, paying attention to who's around you or what you're doing, what you're spending your time on. Let me get some additional cards for pile two. Messages for pile two. Stillness, family, strength. Does this relate to family for some of you guys? Because I did get a parent thing and I don't know, maybe it is family members. Maybe some of you guys have family members that are just takers and constantly want stuff from you and constantly want more and constantly think they have like a, the right to tell you what to do or to, you know, like demand things from you. And sometimes it's really hard to put up those boundaries with family. But I feel like you guys, I, you know, people are so much happier a lot of the time once they put up those boundaries and they just say like, yeah, I can't do this anymore. You know, I, sorry, but mom, I'll, I'll, 
I'll see you um, at the next holiday. But every time I'm around you, you berate me for not having a boyfriend. And that's not something that's going on in my life right now. And I literally just need to put up this a little bit of a boundary. So I love you, but I will, you know, I'll call you next week and please don't mention it, you know, and it's okay. You want to do it in a healthy way. I'm not a, a therapist. So I don't want to give you guys advice for exactly how to have those conversations, but I think it's really good to think about how you feel after an interaction with someone. Do you feel happy? Do you feel fulfilled? Do you feel energized? Do you feel excited? Do you feel stressed, nervous, worried, horrible? And how much of that is your own internal triggers? Cause sometimes it's like you have triggers, you haven't worked out yourself maybe you know you have a weird stress response and all the person did was say like hey what's up and you're like panicking you know because I don't know it's it's some kind of a trigger we got to figure that out but it's all about looking into ourselves and being like what's serving my highest good what can I improve in terms of myself and also with the people around me you know what I mean and if someone truly is constantly bringing you down and for whatever reason maybe insecurity themselves or whatever then that's not someone you want to have around so I feel like this is it's important for you guys to not just keep yourselves busy for the sake of it but to take this time out to really check in let me get some final cards for pile two about the month of May so we got fertility and in that yeah, this might have to do with your living situation. You guys might be thinking about making moves or cutting people out that you're, this might be someone you're living with who's kind of toxic because I am getting like, to be honest, like toxic energy here. And with fertility, again, I was saying like, this is like, you know, when you have a baby, you get pregnant and you don't see anything at first. It just looks like, you know, maybe, maybe some people, I have a friend who's doesn't even look pregnant at all but there's people that you know maybe have a little bit of a tummy at first but it looks like they just had like a big lunch you know um but then that grows and i feel like you guys right now are in that time of being uh, like you're pregnant right now or you're getting pregnant i mean not literally although it could be for some of you guys but i'm getting more like meta metaphysically speaking like you're you're gonna start this new life you're gonna start this new energy for yourself but right now you need to figure out what it is you need to get pregnant you need to figure out whether you want a baby and all this stuff you know what i mean and, and start making plans so let me get strong some astrology dice for pile two so we got cancer 12th house and we got neptune wow a lot of neptune energy this month so um with the um, cancer that also relates to the home fourth house moon so there's a lot of water energy coming through here so the thing about water is using your intuition cancer also relates to family so this really might be relationships with family for some of you guys that are a little bit toxic and you need to kind of reconsider them and if that's resonating and you're like oh yeah it's definitely family then I mean, take this message seriously. Then we also have Neptune and the 12th house, which relates to Pisces, which also came up for pile one. So you guys might have felt drawn to pile one. I don't know, but um, but you have pretty different messages. But I will say that the 12th house and Neptune is all about getting divine messages from spirit, which is what I've been saying is I feel like your guides have been trying to speak to you guys lately, maybe because you've been so busy, tied up with family, tied up with connections and people that maybe be draining you might be draining you. It might be a good idea for you guys to take this time to really meditate, to listen to spirit. You guys might be very psychically gifted in this pile because I keep getting that like they've been trying to send you messages. They want to send you these messages. They feel like you can get them or you should be receptive to them, but you're not getting them for some reason. I feel like a lot of that is due to busyness, is due to you guys, again, being dealing with other people's energy. Cancer is also the mother of the zodiac. And so, you know, sometimes, again, with empaths, they can naturally fall into a caretaking motherly role for the people around them but what about you what about filling up your own tank making you feel good doing the things that bring you fulfillment that's really important so I feel like a lot of you guys you need to kind of take a step back pay attention to yourself pay attention to what's bringing you fulfillment and get these messages from spirit and take them seriously listen when spirit is like this ain't working it's that's that means it's time to go as much as it may think to have to cut off an old friend or to have to cut off a family member it's better than staying in that energy for life and never achieving your purpose and never fulfilling your dreams because you were trying to appease someone else who doesn't have your path doesn't have your destiny might have traumas of their own might be mired in their own bs from dozens of years ago and we're still going to be trying to fix them and it's never going to work so i feel like I want you guys this month to really pay attention to spirit, 
take some time out in nature, take some time to do things that make you feel good, make you feel emotionally fulfilled, whether it's doing a hobby, art, or even just like cooking yourself a good meal, but doing some page of cups energy of like bringing yourself some joy, happiness, fulfillment, some quiet, some peace, meditation, and listening to what those messages are that spirit brings up for you guys. Because I think you guys are going to be making a change this month. That's going to lay the framework for these these manifestations that you guys are going to bring in in the future so i really hope that helped pile two let me know if it resonated in the comments this was a really interesting reading i wasn't expecting all this stuff to come out but it was really interesting to pick up on so let me know what this was for you guys and also make sure to check out my patreon if you want to see my additional readings that i post all the time over there we have a ton of readings especially my 18 plus ones go up over there that are a little raunchier that we can't talk about some of that stuff on youtube but it's not too bad but just you know fantasies and stuff like that so anyway check that out if you guys want to join us over there make sure you're subscribed over here as well and have notifications on if you want to find out as soon as i post but I am sending you guys so much love and light and I hope you all have an amazing day and an amazing month and take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye! Hey pile three, so for your pick a card you guys got the four of cups and for your tarot you got the fool, the hierophant reversed, the hermit reversed, nine of wands reversed, six of swords, page of swords, and the ten of cups reversed. So I feel like a lot of you guys might have been kind of unhappy with what's going on lately, maybe a little bit emotionally unfulfilled with the Hermit and the Hierophant coming out reversed with the Ten of Cups. I'm thinking maybe some of you guys have been spending a lot of time alone and not really connected with other people um, and you haven't been feeling so emotionally fulfilled. It may have been a rough period of time for you guys and I feel like you should be open to something new coming in. Be open to leaving behind a situation that is isn't working for you anymore and almost like you're going to have to be strong minded about this with the page of swords coming out like that you're going to have to be willing to take a strong look at it and be like this isn't working this is um the page of swords is kind of a it's a feistier sign, I would say, or feistier card. It's like a strong, it, it's not, you know, some of the pages can be, it's a younger energy, so it can be very kind of happy-go-lucky kind of a vibe. And the page is not, the page of swords is not. It's much more kind of... Um, looking at the world unflinchingly and not being so satisfied with what's going on. So I feel like you kind of need to look at your life and to pay attention to like, this is working, this isn't. The Page of Cups can also be a card about not paying as much attention as we should to certain situations, being kind of lost in our own minds. And with the Hierophant coming out reverse like that, sometimes the Hierophant can talk about spirituality. So maybe spending more time on spirituality and, and ignoring certain situations in our life. Like sometimes, you know, there's so much value in picket cards and knowledge and wisdom we can gain but if we like aren't making any changes to our life we're not actually taking the steps then then a picket card reading about how well is your business going to do doesn't necessarily work right like we have to actually have a business that can work um and that they can tune into for it to actually really apply to us. So sometimes it can be like we're spending too much time in our dreamland and we're not spending enough time grounded in reality. And honestly, with the um, Taurus energy that we are having in May, this is the perfect time to ground, to actually spend time existing in this physical reality. So you guys might be starting something new and leaving something behind with the Six of Swords coming out reversed. Um, and you guys might be feeling kind of like, just just done with a certain situation with the nine of wands reverse like that it's like I just don't want to fight anymore I don't want to have to do this um and maybe so something that you thought was going to come to like a culmination it's just it's not really working out the way you thought and I feel like you should know if that's the case that it's okay to re to withdraw to pause to reflect to take a moment to be like you know what I messed up here this isn't working for me and wow I that was stupid you know what I mean um that's okay. We don't have to take everything like perfectly all the time. Life doesn't have to go in 100% of a linear straight line. It's okay to sometimes admit when we went down the wrong path or we've been working on the wrong thing, that kind of a thing, or when we just haven't been doing things right. So we got falling, falling angel, spiritual narcolepsy, watchers, transpersonal, hollow bone, teachability, and skywriting the fates and feast of plenty choices and their consequences. So 
I feel like it's like this is kind of a learning month for you and also just I keep getting more grounded in physical reality. So maybe some of you guys have been a little bit too spiritually like up in up in the astral plane but not spending time on this plane and sometimes that can happen when someone's too much in like dreamland that they don't spend time paying their taxes or they don't spend time figuring out their bills or whatever you know or they don't spend time actually going out and socializing and meeting people and we can have all these dreams and ideas but it's kind of like if we imagine a painting in our mind that's a valuable and important part right we have to plan it out and I actually paint a lot and I certainly have gotten halfway through a painting and realized I totally didn't plan it enough I just was like I want to start this and then it's like yeah half of the painting it's like it's not even going to be able to fit on the whole canvas whatever I had imagined like oh that that doesn't I didn't frame it correctly so that is important to plan it out beforehand but we also have to actually like pick up the paintbrush and start painting we can't just keep imagining the painting and then and be like where's the wh why hasn't it happened we need to actually take those physical steps in reality so I see that this month of May a lot of you guys are going to be getting lessons about this and you guys are going to be learning so much this month and it's going to realign you with your fate or your destiny if you felt like you haven't been on your destiny path or when you hear readers talk about like destiny path or about fulfilling a life purpose and you just feel so removed from that and you just feel like that's not what's happening for me at all know that at any point in time we can always realign ourselves we can always say like this ain't working time to fix it and I'm gonna switch this up and I feel like this month there are just little adjustments you might be making and maybe some of this has to do with pressure from other people with watchers transpersonal maybe you feel like you have a lot of eyes on you or something there's a message here for some of you guys that like it doesn't matter what other people think of you it doesn't matter what other people have to say maybe you are on the right destiny but you thought it was going to happen in a shorter time frame and you're like worried about what other people are going to think what worried about what other people are going to say or there's something about your destiny or something you've been working on that you're like I really don't want this person to find out or I really can't imagine what this person's going to say or this person will judge me or worried about judgment from others and if that's the case then you guys need to hear the message that you it, it really doesn't matter they 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 are not important they don't know your destiny and it's so funny I feel how much of the time someone will be really judgmental of something until it reaches like undeniable success and then once they see the success then they'll finally start giving it the respect that maybe it deserved all along but a lot of people they will not give respect until they see the power and it's kind of like then they start thinking like oh maybe I can buddy up to this person and get power from them um and it's kind of not the best attitude to have, but I just feel like it's like, don't worry about what the haters have to say in the meantime, because they'll have to see what you guys have accomplished in the end. So if that has been something that's been weighing on your mind or holding you back from your path, then it's like, I feel like this is a call for you guys to just be very kind of strategic and blunt and not be overly emotionally invested in this because with the 10 of cups reverse, it's like, something about the situation might might be throwing you guys off from your emotional um highest vibration of yourself maybe there's something about a certain situation certain person certain people certain group that just has you afraid of their judgment and you end up not pursuing your path to the most ability something about other people's judgments that's just weighing strongly on your head and you should know that you don't need anyone's approval to get on your destiny path you know um I mean, right now it is Easter. And so, of course, I'm a Christian. I know I have some Christian subscribers, but whether you're a Christian or not, we can all learn from the lesson of Jesus and from Easter. And what's coming to mind is like just how many people, you know, never thought that Jesus could rise from the dead or how many people hated him at the time. And you know what? They didn't need to sign off on it. They didn't need to approve of it. They didn't need to like be like cheering him on when he rose from the dead, according to, again, my religion, Christianity he's alone in the cave and he's all by himself in the dark no one's around like a few of his followers had you know faith in him but a lot of people who even said they supported him were like no there's no way he can survive this and so the thing is is you don't need anyone else to co-sign on your destiny because god has the final say spirit has the final say so for a lot of you guys um you need to know that like you don't need to have everyone agreeing with you you don't you don't need to have people um 
signing off and approving, they'll figure it out in the end. And right now, like, I mean, think about the legacy of Christ. Again, whether you're not religious, that's totally fine or have a different religion, totally fine. But, you know, Christianity has millions of you know, what is it, billions um, around the world. I think it is the largest religion in the world. I could be wrong. But the point is, is that, um, you know, there's a legacy and a destiny that has nothing to do with what the haters think, what the haters have to say, whether they think you can do it, whether they, they think you can't, it doesn't matter. And so you guys need to just get that out of your head this month a little bit. And I see you guys doing that and leaving that behind. Um, because if this is your fate and this is something that you feel called to do, you shouldn't be letting them hold you back. But I do see in the month of May, you guys really refining what this is on your path and on your journey and making the choices that are going to align you more with this feast of plenty, with this positive energy that you guys might be wanting to bring in. So there is abundance and a happy kind of happiness and joy at the end of this. But I feel like there's a message that sometimes when we're doing something big, we've got to go through that like dark forest, you know, um, like, I mean, again, I don't mean to turn this into like a Christian reading, but this just keeps coming up into my mind as the image of like Jesus' dead body in like a dark cave, you know what I mean? And um, sometimes, you, you know, but without that moment of horrible crucifixion and being in a cave like dead, we would never have fulfilled the destiny of Jesus and have billions of people following him. You know what I mean? So sometimes you've got to go in that dark cave moment. Sometimes you've got to go through the hardship, the pain, the difficulty, the tears. When I'm getting chills thinking of this, because when I have had the hardest moments in my life, they've always led to the biggest destinies. And whenever I look back at the biggest moments for me, the biggest blessings, they were always shortly preceded by a real loss and a feeling of like, why the hell did this happen to me? You know? And so I feel like it's, it's, it's realizing that that's part of the deal. It doesn't mean we always have to suffer for a blessing, but sometimes that's part of it. And it doesn't mean you're not going to get that. It doesn't mean it's not going to work out. But I feel like some of you guys need to hear that because you've been going through some pain and hardship. So yeah, I do feel like you guys will have something new. And if a lot of things have been removed from your life, because I'm getting for some of you guys, you might have had a lot of loss recently. Just know that that's a part of it. You're learning lessons. You guys are growing from this and you it will pay off in the end. And again, you can be any religion and listen to my readings, but you know, we, we have, we can always get spiritual lessons from different things. And I am a Christian. So, um, if you don't, you know, you don't have to be Christian to listen, but I think it's a beautiful message regardless. So we got illumination, delight, happiness, and going forward. So like, even though you might be in a lot of pain, I feel like recently, I do feel like this month, there's going to be something where you guys have like little delights and you guys get to go out into nature, which I think is such the energy of tourist season because, you know, most people this time of year, everything is kind of becoming warm again and clearing up and like the sun's coming out and everything's becoming really beautiful. And it's almost like just the smell, the smell of the trees, the smell of the air, the smell of the rain, depending on where you live. I mean, some places they don't have like intense seasons, but they get rainy season. And I happen to love rainy season. And so, you know, wherever you are, there's things that can be found, little delights and joy. And I feel like it's like, it's okay to find a moment of respite or a moment of, of fulfillment this month. So I see you guys spending more time like going outside and actually enjoying life and actually taking the time out to have physical <laughs> physical delights um, in physical reality, in this physical world we live in. Um, sometimes my words, like my brain moves so fast that my words get ahead of me and then I say like strung together nonsense words that make me sound like I'm a crazy person but anyway physical delights so it's almost like going outside to smell the roses having a beautiful slice of cake that brings you happiness and joy obviously we shouldn't be overwhelmingly into that like we shouldn't be just eating toxic foods all the time you know like GMOs and non-organic food I just gotta say it because you know that glyphosate is really bad for you um but you know once in a while to like feel you know taste the beautifulness of like a really good artisanal chocolate that's such Taurus energy or have a glass of champagne that makes us feel amazing once in a while I feel like some of you guys it's almost like we need to see a little bit of joy brought back in this month and so I see you guys doing that I feel like it's like don't be afraid when you have a hardship or a immediate obstacle because that does not mean it's over I always say it ain't over until it's over um 
And, you know, it, it, there's, it's, it's not over until God says it's over. So sometimes you might have a setback in the moment and it might be really demoralizing, but the importance the important thing is to keep going, to find something joyful and delightful to bring your energy back up, to find something that makes you feel good in the moment and then keep it pushing. And I feel like that that's the thing is like you kind of, especially when you're going through an immediate kind of spiritual journey, like at the beginning stages, you're purging. You're having to do a lot of the purging. Once you do the purging, there's not so many things in your life that make you feel horrible. Like I look back at the things that used to stress me out. And to be honest, those things, people whatever situations they're not in my life anymore so i'm not saying i have no problems let me knock on wood because i don't want to bring i don't want to jinx it by saying that but it's just like i i things are a lot easier once i removed certain situations once i started getting rid of people that would bring me down or situations that were stressing me out and started learning how to fix them and also how to anticipate them partially it's like becoming more responsible like if you get stressed out because every time you walk into your kitchen it's a mess then you got to learn to like take that you know 30 minutes at the end of every day to like make sure everything's in place and put everything back and sort everything out and run the dishwasher and even if it takes you like I said 30 minutes or even an hour or however long that's going to make you feel so much better so partially it's getting in yourself into a better emotional place where you are anticipating your own emotional needs and you're taking care of them preemptively so I always say also like it's so good if you have a bath to just regularly take spiritual baths because you know you're not always going to have to deal with a toxic person but once you've been keeping yourself spiritually detoxed once that one toxic person comes up it's not going to affect you as much as if you have like a toxic load you know um that's so high it's kind of like if you work out once and you're just really clean and you took a shower a couple hours before you know you're probably you're not going to smell that bad afterwards you're probably going to honestly smell fine depending on how much sweat you have i mean if you're a girl if you're a guy guys produce a lot more sweat but you know you're probably not going to smell horrible but if you if you haven't showered for two weeks and then you go work out yeah you're gonna smell probably pretty freaking horrible right and so the thing is is like preemptively making the being aware of like things that make you upset and starting to remove them from your life or things that are gonna stress you out like if you don't pay your bills that's gonna stress you out you know because you're gonna get start getting contacted by like a collector or whatever so preemptively anticipating these things is something I think some of you guys need to do um, so that you can feel really good and taking that active role in like, I am not going to tolerate this anymore. If you've been in hermit mode too long, preemptively making yourself go out to a party and socialize and forcing yourself to go up to someone and doing the hard stuff um, to, to talk to them. Maybe you don't know them. You don't really want to talk to them, but going up and being like, hi, it's nice to meet you and, and trying to make that connection. You might find that somehow, even though you don't love them, they introduce you to someone you do get along with. Like, you know, you never know how these things are going to come in. So sometimes it's about forcing ourselves out of our comfort zone a little bit, out of our kind of safe place and just pushing ourselves out into the world. And like I said, Taurus energy is all about being firmly rooted in physical reality. So we also got fairies, earth magic, new moon, promise, and dance celebration. So with fairies, earth magic, again, this is about the magic of the earth. Like literally, I think Tauruses appreciate, I love Taurus so much. And I feel like Tauruses really appreciate that. That's why Tauruses love to eat and stuff, or they have that kind of stereotype or like people joke about that with like different, you know, memes and stuff is like how much Tauruses love to eat. And it's true because they, they understand the beauty of like life and, and the beauty of existing in physical reality that we weren't just put on this earth just randomly it wasn't like well we just uh, why not have you seen like every other planet they're all like freaking horrible looking they all just look like literally hell like it's like you know winds of like 500 miles an hour and you know burning fire and stuff and then we have not only like a habitable planet but a freakingly unbelievably beautiful planet that literally takes your breath away when you like step outside and actually take the time to walk through nature and you're just like oh my god this is so beautiful it's unbelievable and so we're not put on don't don't think of it as a fluke. You know, I think something really important for a lot of people to do is like considering your own rea mortality. Consider the fact that like you don't have forever on this planet, that this life is a gift. And how many people who pass would love to spend one more day, you know, just like being able to taste and have like whipped cream with some berries, you know, or to have, um, 
another walk outside in the summer and smelling the, the, the right after it rained and smelling that amazing petrichor and green scent like that those things are a gift seeing a sunset all those things we should all make sure we're taking the time to bring joy and delight to our lives and some of you guys i think need to consider your morality more, yeah more, morality wait mortality in that sense and consider the fact that we don't have forever on this planet like um, so like time is of the essence. So if you're just spending your time, you know, too much in dreamland, too much in the astral plane or too much reading, you know, fiction or watching movies or playing video games, that's not a good use of your life. Yeah, you can do that, you know, and make yourself feel good. It's a beautiful thing. Like I love going to the beach and like, you know, bringing a novel and like reading it in the sand. And of course, using our imagination is a beautiful thing. I always encourage people to have hobbies that are like painting and drawing. I, I think it uses a similar part of the brain as doing uh, like um, spiritual work because I think it's just, yeah, it's that same like accessing the astral plane when you're doing divine art and stuff like that. However, if you're living your whole life on the astral plane, whether it's because you're only doing spiritual work, but you never leave your apartment or whether it's because you're, you know, watching movies all the time, but like you're not actually putting yourself out there. Maybe you watch a lot of, you know, romantic movies, but you would really love a romance, but you never leave your apartment. Okay, well, who do you want to date? The UPS guy? I mean, the Amazon driver, like you gotta, you gotta give spirit opportunities to make these things happen in reality. Um, and you know, like I said, I do private readings. If you guys ever want to book one, you can always go to the link in my bio for now I'm doing them. I don't know how much longer I will, but, um, they, you know, like I talk to people on the other side and it's like, there are people that didn't, there are people that were happy to leave and are very okay with it, but there's also people that didn't want to leave and that like, you know, a health issue happened or some negligence happened or whatever. And it's like, it's such, we're given this lifetime to experience things, to achieve certain things, to serve out certain goals, to learn. It is like an educational school for us on this earth. And there are so many people that would love to have the opportunity we have to explore things, to do things, to go places, to try things, to taste things, you know, and to experience and live life to the fullest and not just be like shut away and just like looking at life through a screen or just looking at life and imagining it. We're supposed to be rooted in reality, feeling things, tasting things, holding things, touching things, smelling things all of it. We're given our five senses for a reason. So I just feel like that's a message for a lot of you guys that I was channeling really intensely about what you're supposed to know for May. So let me get some more cards about what's happening in May to dance, celebrate. And again, I feel like some of you guys want love, but you're not going out and leaving the house and you got to do it. You've got to do it. You know, you can't just want... I mean, unless someone breaks into your house, like you're not going to meet anyone. And I don't think you'd want to date them. Okay, so we got dragonfly spirit change, butterfly spirit transformation, toadstools growth. So you guys are going to change this month. There's going to be a lot of change happening. Yeah. It's happening with a lot of dragon energy, dragonfly, and we got dragon. So that's a super powerful, the most powerful animal in the Chinese zodiac or sign in the Chinese zodiac. So this is going to be very powerful, transformative month for you guys. And I think you're going to be growing a lot and changing and refining what it is you want. I feel the vibe that a lot of you guys have been searching for something lately. Like you guys have been, hmm, how do I put this? Like feeling feeling like the winds of change have been blowing, but you're not sure what you're supposed to do. You're not sure where you're supposed to go. You feel like you're supposed to be doing something important, but you don't know what that is. And I feel like you're going to get the message of the direction you're supposed to be headed and what you're supposed to be doing. Um, and I feel like you guys need to step into that and not be afraid. Some of you guys have been afraid to step into this because you're like, again, afraid of other people's judgment, afraid of what people are going to say. But as one of my favorite sayings ever, and if they hate, then let them hate and watch the money pile up. Like honestly, and every single like rappers talk about this all the time, right? They talk about the haters. They talk about people coming against them. Why? Because if you want success, especially with a lot of rappers is like, you know, they, a lot of them kind of really came from the bottom to the top, right? There's other fields of music that I think are kind of highly nepotistic, you know what I mean? Like where, you know, like no offense to anyone 
who's into pop or anything like that. I like pop music. I mean, a lot of my music that I pull from my cards is, is pop songs, so I'm not insulting it. But you know, a lot of people maybe got that way through nepotism or connections or whatever, and doesn't take anything away from who they are, or their songwriting or whatever, but it just is a different focus they have, right? They didn't alchemize themselves of like, I have nothing and now I'm turning it into something. A lot of rappers did. A lot of rappers start with like hardly you know, not a lot of money at all, but then they turn it into something amazing. And there's a special alchemy when you're able to do that. When you're able to take hardly anything and blow it up into a million dollars, that takes more work than taking like 200K and blowing it into a million, right? So they understand that principle that when you're doing something big, when you're doing something special and stepping into a powerful destiny, you are going to have haters. You are going to have people that don't want to see you succeed, that want to see you kept down. And so if that has been holding you guys back and you have not wanted to do something powerful or important or expand your business or broaden this or something like powerful with this, know that that is such a stupid thing to pay attention to because sooner or later, there's a lot of people that don't like certain rappers or might have never heard of them, but they'll take a selfie with them if they see a crowd rushing around them, right? Or they'll listen to their music when they realize everyone else is listening to it. Um, Same with pop artists. A lot of pop artists actually, I think, get made fun of, but then later on someone will be like, well, they're really cool once they get a certain level of fame. So people will come around when they see you guys really succeeding. Let me get one final card, happiness. That came out reverse though, but I think they want you to be happy this month. And you guys will have a lot of blessings coming. I think this is, but you've got to have the willpower. This is another thing. Some of you guys have been like staying inside and just not, not really doing a lot. And you've got to actually take the energy and work on this um, and make these things happen. So let's get some Astrodice. So we got, oh my God, we got the nodes, we got Capricorn and we got the 12th house. So much Pisces energy coming through in these readings that has come up for every single pile that's the house of endings, transformations and, and leaving things behind. And I feel like a lot of you guys, a lot of people must be leaving stuff behind and also getting divine downloads from spirit. I feel like this is a very spiritually potent time of year, which it is. That's why there's so many religious um, things, different, different religions having stuff happening at this time, whether it's Christianity with Easter or Ramadan or Passover, it is a very spiritually potent powerful time of year where we're setting the framework and the foundation for the rest of the year so pay attention to what comes through during this time then with capricorn that's a that's a energy all about hard work so also being rooted in reality and you guys have got to do that because i feel like a lot of you guys with the node coming out this is about your destiny this is about stepping into your destiny but capricorn always understands that in order to make something happen you've got to work hard Capricorn is the mountain goat. And if you've ever seen a mountain goat scaling something, like you'll see mountain goats can even climb up brick buildings. There's no ledge there, but like a tiny little mountain goat can climb their way up like a skyscraper if they had to, because they are that amazing at finding a little ledge, finding an opening and getting through it. And for some of you guys, again, with this metaphor, I keep getting of Jesus in the cave, which if you're not Christian, just take it as a lesson of a spiritual lesson you know, I'm not trying to push anything on anyone. I'm just saying my spiritual beliefs, but like being in that cave, it feels like the end of the world. It feels like there's no way out. Right. But there always is. Capricorns understand that they take the tiniest little ledge, the tiniest little indentation in the mountain, and they find their way to climb up there. So it's like, do not let these, you know, find it's a matter of constantly finding energy within yourself and pushing yourself further like do I have more of a reserve okay I can do it I can push a little harder I can keep going I can get out through this well this got blocked off okay I'm going to come in through here but first we got to get aligned of course with whatever it is that serves our destiny that makes us want to work that hard that feels worthy of pouring our, all our energy into it and there here we have the nodes and so that is your destiny that is something that brings you so much fulfillment and joy and serves your destiny your purpose. So for a lot of you guys, I feel like you're going to be figuring that out this month. I am having my career reading, which is coming up very shortly. So definitely check that out if you need a little guidance of what direction to head. But I feel like a lot of you guys, maybe what has been going on in the past isn't working anymore. And you're just feeling very stuck up with that, like blocked and just like you're not happy. Well, this is all about transforming your life into the energy you want and finding joy and fulfillment and recognizing that an ending only means a new beginning. And this is the perfect time of year with Easter. Like it's like resurrection energy. It's like fresh start energy. It's it's beginning of the astrological year, you know, all the flowers blooming, all the, you know, 
little birds hatching and everything new. So an ending, a winter in your life does not mean death. 12th house is just recycling us into the first house. That's why it's a wheel that keeps going. So an ending does not mean it's over. It ain't over till it's over. It means something new is going to come in. So I feel like you guys will be seeing that happen this May. And I'm excited for you guys. Sometimes what seems like the worst thing ever is the best thing ever, but I don't think it's going to be worst month ever. I just think some of you guys, there were a lot of complex messages here. And for some of you guys, there's things you're letting go. And then there's the newness you're bringing in. And I'm excited because it's going to lead to all these blessings and happiness and super positive cards that we got towards the end of your reading. So that shows us that it's leading towards so much blessings and happiness. So I really hope that helped pile three. This was a really intense, interesting reading. So let me know if it resonated in the comments, you guys. I love hearing from you, especially about a reading that was so intense like this. I'm always curious about what's going on. So let me know. Also make sure to give this reading a big thumbs up. And if you guys want to see my additional readings, make sure to check out my Patreon. The link to that is in my bio. If you want to see my additional readings, including my 18 plus readings that are like not too raunchy, but just like, you know, what other fantasies and other love readings, stuff like that. So it's a lot of great content over there. Definitely check that out. And also make sure you're subscribed over here and have notifications on so you can find out as soon as I post. But I am sending you guys so much love and light and an amazing month too. I hope you all take care of yourselves and I will see you next time. So see you then. Bye. Hey, pile four. So for your pick a card, you guys got abundance. And for the tarot, you guys got the hanged man, page of pentacles, ace of cups, two of cups, page of wands, death, and the king of cups. So I can see that this is a banner month for you guys. It seems like things are going really well. We have the abundance card leading off. So financially, I feel like things are going to be going well. You guys are going to have some kind of a windfall or have the amount of money to pay your bills. Also with the two of cups coming in, you guys might be meeting your soulmate, might be meeting a romantic partner this month. This is very positive. Something that's coming up is that you guys might be at the beginning stages of a project or something you guys are working on with the page of wands you have a lot of energy for it you're willing to attend to all the details the way you should and be coming into it with a lot of that young fiery excited energy that we need to get a project off the ground i almost feel like there may be something about this project though that you have been working on that you can do a little bit differently so keep your eyes open for things that may seem unexpected or may seem like a little bit different like hmm, i could do it this way or like oh that's a really good suggestion you know what i've been doing it like this but this person suggested this and it's so much easier so if there's something that may come out of the blue that's a little like Huh, I, I don't know about that. I'm not sure about it, but I guess I could try it. Definitely think about that because with the hanged man, it may seem out of the blue or it may seem like something you weren't expecting it to go that way. It might even be if you are meeting this soulmate that the person looks different from how you usually date or is different in some way from how you usually date. But I feel like there's a lot of potential here for it to make you very happy with the Ace of Cups and the King of Cups. This is a card about emotion. These are cards about emotional fulfillment, about someone who has their emotions really going really well for them. So everything seems to be really flowing easily in your life this month. The only messages that are coming through that could possibly be negative are with the death card and the hanged man, which can talk about things ending and changes happening or something you're not expecting to happen happening. So I don't think it's necessarily bad, but things might also be ending in your life and we'll get into that more in the rest of the reading. But I do feel like this month seems good. It seems like you're working on something where maybe it's not the very beginning, but it's kind of like towards the beginning of this project or if, if it's at the end of it, there's still so much energy here that I, it feels like it's the, the fresh start. It feels like you guys are invigorated by something. You're doing something new. It might have even been something you were working on for a while and then put down and then are working on it again with the hanged man. It could be something that you were like, oh, that's over. I'm done with that. Um, I'm not going to do that again. And then you like look at it again and you're like, oh my gosh, I really love this. Why did I stop doing this? Um, like I know for me, I painted in high school really intensely, was in a really advanced program and then I didn't paint for years. And then when I picked it up again, I was like, why did I ever stop? This is like amazing for me. It's like therapy painting. I love painting. So 
you know, it, it might be something like that, that you kind of gave up on, but then you take a second look at it and you're like, oh, this is really great. Um, but keep your eyes out for that energy of something that is a little unexpected, something that maybe wasn't at the forefront of your mind, but now you see it differently. And now it's like, oh, this is a, this is a really great, um, different way I could do it. So let's get more cards. So we got overflow, overwhelm and plenty, eye of the needle, intentionality, heart, home, compassion, fortunes, wheel, luck and right timing and garden of Venus rest and renewal so these are two cards that came out for pile one and you guys might have also felt drawn to pile one because I could definitely see similar energy so if you guys felt drawn to that definitely take the time to watch that but yeah financially things are really going well this month I feel like you guys um whatever this is it feels like it's pro plodding along as it should so I feel like there may be a project that you guys have been working on and it's like you were hoping it was going to do well and it is going to do well and everything is happening like the way it should and it might even feel too good to be true or like you have luck on your side kind of like wow I can't believe this is happening so easily because Venus is an energy that is very restful that just allows things to flow so even though I feel you guys have a lot of energy for this and you're being very intentional and smart I also feel like you're getting lucky breaks on this like things are just happening for you and you're not having to fight so hard um, so I feel like it's a great balance here between having Venus energy but also having these page cards coming out so even though things are flowing easily and things are happening easily you also have a lot of natural energy for it you are not just kind of letting things just fall into place you're also taking a very active role in this and being like I'm going to work on this I should do that. I should, um, you're, you're being intentional about it. You know, you guys are looking at the situation and seeing what needs to be adjusted, being disciplined about it, maybe waking up at a certain time of day and being very like, okay, I committed to doing this, so I'm going to do it. Um, which I think is a huge key for manifestation and making things happen. And I find sometimes something that's coming to mind as like the energy in this pile is like, Sometimes if there's something I've been dreading doing or it's been building up in my mind of like, oh, I should finish this. And then I'm like, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do it. And you just kind of find yourself avoiding it. Even if it's not conscious, you're like, I want to go work out or like, I'm going to go cook. And next thing you know, you're like, okay, it's been a couple hours. I have this thing I was supposed to do. I haven't been doing it. One of the best things you can do is just do some kind of task that you wouldn't necessarily normally love. Like for me, it's cleaning. So if there's, you know, a load of laundry I can fold or like I can just wipe down all my countertops or I can put away some dishes that were in my sink and maybe rinse but I didn't put them in you know the dishwasher anything I can do like that and like tidy up the space and like there's something about that that gives you the confidence where you're like oh that wasn't so hard you know I just yeah I just put everything away and or maybe I you know unloaded the dishwasher and I don't even have any new dishes but I'm just gonna or I the dish dishes are clean in the dishwasher and now I'm going to unload it. You know what I mean? But just doing something small and being disciplined about the small things helps you be disciplined about the big things. And I see you guys being very disciplined this month and continuing to work on this project or goal and stepping towards it and making a lot of progress with it. So it feels like it's really good. And I feel like either you're making a lot of money this month or you will soon and it's going to pay off for you in terms of finances also with heart home I am wondering and this came up with pile one too because I just feel like you guys feel very connected to pile one but maybe there's a move coming in or something like that or you guys are sprucing up your home um, but you might be thinking about moves you want to make or um, like where you want to live next or even it could be moving jobs or something like that but definitely the energy of a move or some home improvement and Taurus is literally the perfect time for doing a home improvement I think like because Taurus energy is so luxury it's so beautiful it's so physically beautiful um, because it's you know an earth sign and then there's the Venus energy so it's beauty in the physical like not this kind of ephemeral like mental um, esoteric idea of beauty it's like actual physically beautiful in the physical realm and so Tauruses always understand how like a beautiful home can lead to someone feeling good so again this energy maybe you guys are doing a spring cleaning it is such a great idea to do a spring cleaning this time of year that's why there's the phrase spring cleaning but this is the beginning of the astrological year so it's a great time to clear out the energy from the last year by you know wiping down the floors vacuuming 
dusting and doing all that stuff that may seem like a little bit of a chore in the moment, but is going to allow beautiful energy to flow into your house. I always recommend saging and then throwing open all your doors. Of course, you need to keep like windows or a door open anyway while you're saging so that like the spirits can actually leave that are bad and the energies that are bad can leave. So that's like saging 101. But I like to keep my doors and windows open for as long as I can after to welcome in the new energy and set the intention of like, I am welcoming in love, abundance, money, whatever it is you want. So, you know, our homes, the places we live can have such an effect on our mental state. And so maybe for for some of you guys, this is about cleaning your space, making your bed, you know, that kind of a thing, or like putting up some murals that make you feel good. Just, I have a lot of art that just makes me feel good that I don't know that anyone else would even appreciate, but I love it because it makes me feel happy and high vibe. And so sometimes for some of you guys, this might be some home improvement, putting up paintings you really like or painting a wall in a way you like. It could be just cleaning your space or even thinking about making a move or moving cities or moving within a city to a place that is going to make you feel like your highest vibrational version of yourself. Another thing with Taurus and this type of energy at this time of year is bringing in potted plants or something like that. But I feel like you guys will have the money to pay for these things this month. Things are going well financially, so it's almost like you can pay attention to those other things in your life that are going to make you feel good and bring you a lot of joy. But I love this Garden of Venus. That's kind of the energy I'm picking up on is like a beautiful place. And this is why back in the day, like kings and emperors and, you know, queens and all the people who, um, you know, had a lot of money, they would always pay for like really elaborate gardens. And you can still see those in places like Rome, where there are just huge gardens attached to like the palazzos, you know, um, it's not like they just made a really beautiful house inside but they actually paid for like incredible gardens that like the land nowadays is priceless because they're like massive and they take up such a big swath of like Rome where real estate is so expensive um, but it's like they are paying for that because they understood the importance and how rejuvenating it is for someone to walk through a beautiful garden to have a beautiful space that's no coincidence that so many famous leaders and rulers and stuff did that they understand the importance of rejuvenating ourselves and being surrounded by beauty that it's not pointless it's not just like indulgent and not paying off it actually does lead us to have so much more wisdom so much more downloads and knowledge and lead us to have more abundance so if you guys have been feeling inspired to redo your place I could definitely see that happening in May and I definitely feel like you guys should go along with that and definitely do that so we also got inner peace change and blessings so this is a really positive month with blessings coming out I feel like things are going well for you and it just feels like you guys are in a peaceful place it feels like there's not so much emotional disruption or pain or like hardship happening I feel like you guys are in a calm place maybe you guys are meditating or you've done things to kind of become aligned with more of a peaceful energy so you're not stressing out about the small things you're not getting upset about if this thing didn't work out, you understand that's part of the process. Um, but I feel like you guys are thinking intensely about changes. It's almost like you're very happy where you are, but you're like, I want I want thrills. I want better. And I feel like you guys are thinking about what you could do to bring that in. So you might have big changes getting coming in. I'm getting for some of you guys, I just saw the image of a pregnant woman. And so I don't know if some of you guys are either going to be, be getting pregnant or giving birth, um, but that's only for some of you guys. But I feel like you guys might be very well, um, some of you guys who have been trying to start a family, that might be happening. Um, but there, there's changes happening this month that I feel like is going to be even better than what you have. Like right now you already have a lot, but it's going to take it to that higher of a level that is even beyond what, like other people would probably look at your situation now and be like, oh my God, how could they not be happy? They already have everything. But we're taking it up to the next level. We're gonna make it so much better. Um, so I do feel like it may be a move for a lot of you guys. It may be a physical move in your house. Um, or, or changing that house or changing workplaces. But I feel like what I love about this pile is just there's a sense of calmness. There's a sense of openness too and like willingness to accept the energy. So I feel like you're just allowing things to flow to you. Even though you're doing the work, you really have this very balanced alchemical way of doing the work, making sure you're rigorous and disciplined, but also being in a place of rest and welcoming in the abundance that you know is your birthright. So I really love this. I feel like you guys are my alchemists. You guys are my 
my spiritually very wise pile and I definitely can tell from the energy that you guys have been doing the work. So we got wolf instinct, ocean, ebb and flow, new moon promise and dream time creation. So yeah, I do feel like a lot of you guys, maybe if you are single, cause I keep getting this pregnancy energy. If you guys are single, it could be that you are going to meet your partner that you're going to be pregnant like with them. You're going to start a family with them one day. Um, I feel like there's a very strong love energy for some of you guys and Taurus is a perfect time for love. It is ruled by Venus. So perfect energy for finding that soulmate or spending time with your partner. And if you guys do have a partner, I feel like you're going to be spending a lot of time with them. Um, or you might meet someone new that might lead to that. Um, so definitely get out there. Make sure you guys are actually going out because I feel like you guys are looking really good at this time. And this is a time when you want to make sure you're putting yourself out there and going out and creating that opportunity for spirit to let you meet someone. So even if you're not the type to go out to a nightclub or, you know, do Tinder, which I totally understand. I don't really like using those things either, but make sure that you're, you know, going out to the dog park or going to take walks walks around town or you know going to grab lunch somewhere or going to get coffee and that you look energetically open you look like friendly to talk to or maybe you could even start the conversation I mean for my feminines you know it's good to let the masculine come up come to you but maybe if you're the masculine um you you know you definitely can be the one to go up and you know be like oh what coffee do you drink I always get a latte but what about you how do you take it and just start a conversation or maybe if you're the feminine you can find a way to do that in like an alluring, you know, um, receptive type of way. But I just feel like this could be a really potent time for you guys this month to meet a soulmate, to meet the person that you might start the family with. And for some of you guys, you might already be in the relationship already pregnant, already at that stage. Um, but yeah, I feel like right now you guys are kind of really hashing out your future. It feels like you guys have already reached a certain level of success. Like you don't have, you know, because I do personal readings. If you guys want to book one, you can always head down to the link in my bio and book a private reading with me. But, um, you know, I talk to people who have different things going on in their lives and some people have like complete chaos and some people are at such a steady perfect point in their life that I'm almost like, why are you even getting a reading? Like it, everything's good, you know? Um, but of course everyone has their problems, but I feel like it's like a lot of you guys are at that level where you don't have some of the like chaos in your life. Like you are not having things go off the rails. It feels like you guys have really balanced things and things are going okay financially at the very least, if not doing really well and things are going well, like personal life. Like it doesn't feel like you have a lot of the chaos and stress that a lot of people have figured out. And I just want to give you kudos because, you know, a lot of that is your own work and the work you were willing to put in and the effort you put into your situation. And you guys coming really strongly into this situation with a very wise spiritual mentality, going with the ebb and flow of life, putting in the work when you need it, but also being able to receive. You might have even followed your instincts. So I feel like there's a message that if you guys feel instinctually drawn to a certain thing now, make sure you continue to follow your instincts because it's just as important to do that once you have a lot of things as at the very beginning. Sometimes we know that when someone's like younger and kind of in survival mode that they need to follow their instincts, but we can forget that that's just as important once you've reached this position of power in your business or in your job or whatever. You still need to be paying instinctual attention to what spirit is saying to you. So I feel like spirit is going to give you some downloads this month about where you should move, where you should head, the changes you should make, and you should definitely pay strong attention to that. So let's get some additional cards for pile four for the month of May. What is going to be happening for pile four in the month of May? So we got Enchanted Fern Grotto Refuge. Okay, so more home energy. We got Hummingbird Spirit, Joy. Any other messages? Stability. Yeah, things feel very stable in your life right now. Honestly, I don't feel like you guys have a lot of chaos going on. If you do, I'm not picking up on it. It just feels like things are really going good for you. But I feel like you're going to improve it and make it that much better. And I keep getting home changing and, and something about the home, something about you guys shifting. Um where you live or how you live or the living situation in some way and making it that much better. So even though it's already really good and maybe you already live in a beautiful place that so many people would be like thrilled to live in, but you're going to take it up a notch and make it even more perfect. And it's going to literally feel like your little refuge safe haven that like 
people would just be so grateful if they got to live in this place. And it's going to be this beautiful Taurus, gorgeous energy. So if you feel called to fill it up with fresh flowers or put up a new painting or paint something yourself or change your bedding, this is definitely the time to do it. Let me get some more cards for pile four for the month of May. What messages should they expect in the month of May? So we got closure. I do feel like living situation is something that some of you guys aren't as happy with. Grieving. So maybe for some of you guys, now another message is coming through. And I did ask for another message because I feel like we've talked a little bit about your other message. So I'm like, is there anything else? And maybe there's a message for some of you guys that you might be grieving um, the loss of like a family loved one or something. Um, and I feel they're coming through a little bit in this reading just to reassure you that even though I feel like you guys aren't devastated over this every day, it still feels like it feels like a loss to you and you've kind of moved on from that, but they want you to know how power, how proud they are of you, how, um, happy they are that like anything that was left unsaid between you guys they know they hear you guys talking to them or talking out loud to them and they know that like you know you you how much you love them if you never got the chance to say that that's only a message for some of you guys but i do feel like your guides in this pile want a major message they're bringing through is how proud they are of you how powerful you are how much you guys have done and how you will continue to do it but pay attention to your intuition this month because it's going to be popping on point and telling you what changes you should um, make where you should move where you should go some of you guys are going to be moving across country some of you guys are going to be moving within the same city or to a different you know building or just really changing the interior but i do feel like a lot of you guys a move is in order um and for a lot of you guys, you're going to be figuring that out this month. It's really going to be refining or even making that move. And for some of you guys, it is because you're bringing through this new life. You're bringing through um, a little baby or you're finding that person who is going to give you a baby. Um, but it's very positive. It's like, again, you already have a good life and now we're just making it so much better. Let's get some Astro Dice to find out the energies for Pile 4 for the month of May. So we got... 12th house that has come through in every single reading that is crazy so there is really strong 12th house energy happening for you guys we got pluto and we got scorpio what the heck there's so much water energy in this reading like seriously this is the second one that's had all water signs come out um so okay scorpio and pluto are the same thing and those are transfer that's transformational energy endings that turn into a rebirth and you did get the phoenix which is the sign of the highest vibration of scorpio so yeah there's a strong scorpionic energy where i feel like you know one thing i love about scorpio is it is that water energy but it's a very powerful version of it in ancient astrology and in vedic astrology it's ruled by mars planet of war so it's really sometimes people are like is scorpio really a fire a water sign it seems like a fire sign and it's like no it is it's just a very powerful kind of almost masculine embodiment of water energy so whereas cancer you know is the moon and it's very receptive and so is pisces and they have power in their own ways but scorpio is kind of that traditional version of power that we all think of when we think of power of like someone fighting and in a rage and coming in with strength and and so i feel like they're saying that a lot of you guys you have so much power and it's like, don't be afraid of that. Don't be afraid of the downloads you get. Scorpios are so psychic. They get so much intense downloads. And what I love is they're very quick about it. They're very quick with their judgments. Whereas Pisces gets very intense, powerful downloads. So does Cancer, but especially Pisces and Scorpio to me, you know, they get these really intense downloads, but Pisces tends to question themselves and be like, well, but maybe they meant this and tr try to see the best. That's why Pisces is exalted in Venus because they always see the best. They, they're very forgiving, whereas Scorpio is the opposite. Scorpio is not forgiving, and they will cut someone off quick, and they're very content with being in their power. They're not trying to like appease anyone or make someone feel good. They're like, if I don't like you, you're out. And so I feel like there's a message for you guys that even though I feel you have accomplished a lot in this pile, be aware if you get a shady feeling with someone, be aware if you're feeling called to make a move, be aware of any of the downloads you're getting 
of the people that maybe you might even be sad. Maybe this is where grieving and closure comes in is like, maybe it's time for you guys to kick them out of your life. And spirit doesn't want you to be so forgiving, or maybe you need to be forgiving with them, but like keep an eye on them. But I just feel like you guys should be very much paying attention to the information you're getting at this time, because I feel like in May, you're going to get some of the answers psychically to the things you guys have wanted to know. Like you're like, well, okay, I'm happy with my life now, but I want it to be this. I want that. How do I get there? Well, Spirit's going to tell you. So you guys have got to be psychically open this month with so much water coming in. It's a clear sign that you guys should be energetically paying attention to what spirit tells you. And I didn't notice that there's all the phases of the moon over the Ace of Cups on this. So yeah, there's strong psychic energy coming through this pile with all the cup energy and everything. Wolf instinct. I think you guys have powerful instincts and spirit just really wants to echo how important that is, what a gift it is, and that you guys need to be paying strong attention to that. Um, and yeah, that's like a like I was saying, that's 12th house, Pisces energy. Pisces or 12th house is also the energy of endings. Um, it's, it, it is also the energy of psychic abilities. So really, I can't emphasize enough how much this pile needs to be paying attention to the downloads they get, needs to be um, focused very intensely on listening to spirit because I feel like I don't know. I feel like you guys have a very strong, powerful team of guides on the other side because they're kind of coming into me right now. And I'm like, is this turning into a mediumship reading? Because like, <laughs> this is just supposed to be months ahead of for May, but I literally can feel guides. I'm like, okay, so I'll have to stage after this one, but it's okay, guys. <laughs> but I just feel like, um, you guys have a very strong, powerful team on the other side that have been guiding you and you guys have been paying attention and they want to acknowledge that, but they're just saying in this month of May that there's something and I'm getting some of you guys do need to leave a certain situation very strongly. Like there's a certain situation some of you guys are stuck in that just needs to end and you know it. And maybe I'm seeing a shady type of person around you. I'm seeing like a shady guy, it seems like, but it could be a woman in her masculine energy. Um, but I am seeing someone with like a goatee. I don't know. I don't know who this is. It could be, again, a woman in her masculine energy since the general reading, but for some, it's just extra confirmation. But there is shady shadiness around you or jealous people that are maybe mad of everything you guys have manifested. Um, and some, sometimes with the Ace of Cups, you guys might look on the bright side too much or just be too optimistic, too like positive. You know, Paige is a very positive energy as well or very like optimistic and it can be overly optimistic. Like sometimes you got to be in night energy and drill down and be like, this needs to be fixed. That needs to be fixed. This is janked up. And that's powerful. Like there's, some, there's good in that. We do want to be positive and upbeat and stuff, but we also need to take our power back sometimes and say like, this situation needs to change, this needs to fix, or I could improve this, and not just put on rose-colored glasses to everything, and not just try to see the best in people and um, ignore the red flags. So I feel like you guys, there's a message for you guys that you've done this in the past, you've had to face shady people in the past, and you have found a way to protect yourself from them and transmute their energy and get away from them. And even though you're in a much more financially secure place, know that like one little nasty spy or hater person can bring down a kingdom. So be protective of yourselves. And I feel like you guys just need to sort out some of these people. And then I think, you, you know, it's going to continue to be positive because I feel like you guys are very unstoppable. You're very spiritually aligned. You've been doing a lot of the alchemy work. You're very spiritually advanced in this pile. So yeah, I think just, just a little refinement and making sure you're paying attention to your instincts this time. If you don't want to let these people go and it feels really sad to release them from your life, whatever, that's still what you got to do. And, um, and, and, you know, you've got to make sure that that you're really listening to spirit. That's the most important thing. So if they're telling you to let something go, you got to let it go, no matter how much you may hate it. So I really hope this resonated pile four. Let me know if it did in the comments or how it did, because I'm really curious about this pile in particular. This was really interesting. I didn't expect it to turn into a mediumship reading. So it's very interesting. So let me know. Also make sure to check out my Patreon where I post my additional readings over there. And I have my 18 plus readings over there. So it's not too raunchy, but we get into a little of like, what are their fantasies and kind of the more fun topics over there. So definitely check that out if you want to join us over there and make sure you're subscribed over here as well and have notifications on if you want to find out as soon as I post. I am sending you guys so much love and light. I hope you all have an amazing day and an amazing month and take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. So see you then guys. Bye.